Hello, this video talks about commonly used decoders in analog design. It is a well-known fact that from n bit signal, we can generate 2 to power n unique combinations. And the circuit which is used to generate this combination is called decoder. Now there are many ways these combinations can be generated. For example, for 2 bit signal, we can think of these combinations. Here input is 2 bit signal and output can be either 4 bit signal or 3 bit signal. There can be many more possible ways to arrange the outputs. But we will restrict our discussion to the decoders which are used commonly in analog design. In analog design, decoders are used to select various modes in trimming voltage or current signals to generate programmable voltages or currents in digital to analog converters or in DACs or in general anywhere in the design where you have to select, configure or calibrate anything. So let's start with one of the most obvious decoders. One hot decoder generates 2 to power n outputs from n inputs and for any given combination only one of the output is 1 and that is why it is called 1 hot. A closely related variant is called one cold decoder where for a given input combination only one of the output is logic zero. So if we invert all the outputs of one hot decoder, we get one cold decoder. So let's see one design example. So this is the truth table of three bit one hot decoder. Notice that sometimes we require a decoder where one combination is all zero. So if we remove the last column of the output or LSV of the output, then we can get such decoder. But it will have only seven outputs. Coming to the implementation of this decoder, notice that any given column, which represents any one of the output contains only single one or single high value for any other combination is zero. And this functionality can be easily implemented using AND gate. So remember that the output of AND gate is 1 only if all the inputs are 1. So this is one possible implementation of 3 bit 1 hot decoder. So I have two bunch of inverters to generate the inverted and buffered version of the inputs. Now in principle I don't really need the buffered version of the input because I can simply use the inputs. But I prefer to use the buffered version. And the reason is that in most of the cases, I don't have a good control over the transitions of the input. This is because this input may come from the digital part of the chip or some block which is sitting far away. Having a buffered version generated locally gives me a much better control over signal transitions. To generate one cold decoder, we can put inverter after every AND gate. Or we can simply replace all the AND gates by NAND gates. And finally, to generate a decoder where outputs have all zero for one combination, we can simply remove one of the AND gates. So to implement N bit one hot decoder, we need two N inverter and two to power N N input AND gates. But as N becomes large, getting N input AND gates becomes difficult. But we can generate N input AND gates by cascading fewer input AND gates. For example, 4 input AND gate can be implemented using 2 input AND gates like this. Now it is commonly known fact that digital circuits can be implemented most optimally using universal logic gates which are NAND gates and NOR gates. Now circuits like this can be converted into equivalent form which is made of universal logic gates using some simple rules. To explain these rules, I will use bubble notation of inverter where inverter is represented as small bubble or small circle. Next, notice that we can replace any wire by two bubbles without changing the overall functionality. Since two inverters make a buffer, we have simply replaced the AND gate by buffered AND gate. So it doesn't change the overall functionality. Next step is to slide these bubbles backwards and forwards so that they touch the logic gates. So after this step, First two gates are converted into universal gate. To convert third gate into universal gate, we need to learn another rule. 
I will call this rule propagation of bubble. But you may as well call it De Morgan's law. According to propagation of bubble rule, if an AND gate contains bubble at all its inputs, then all these bubbles can be propagated to the output by changing AND gate to the OR gate. You can easily verify this rule by writing the truth table of these two circuits. The De Morgan's law for this transformation can be given by this equation. There is an equivalent rule for the OR gate. So after applying this rule, we get our desired implementation. So usually I design my logic in terms of AND gate and OR gates because it is easier to think and then convert it back to universal gate using these simple rules. One of the problems in one hard decoders are glitches or unintentional short pulses during input transition. During signal transition, inputs may not change at the same time because of different delays between them. Consider an input transition from state 0, 1 to 1, 0 in a 2-bit decoder. If LSB in 0 has little more delay in its path, then we have an unintentional state 1, 1 during the transition. Now if these unintentional glitches are a problem, then one can use resampling technique to minimize the problem. The idea behind resampling is to sample the input signals again inside your block using a sampling clock. Sampling is performed near the center of the two transitions. But if in your application, the input bus is increasing or decreasing linearly one bit at a time, then you can also think of using gray coding. In gray code, the adjacent combination differ only in one bit. Considering 3-bit gray code as an example, consider that any two adjacent combinations differ only in one bit. While in equivalent 3-bit binary, Consider these two combinations where all the bits are actually inverted. And since in successive transitions only one bit is changing at a time, the probability of glitches becomes very small. There is an easy way of generating n-bit gray code using reflect and prefix rule. Start with one bit gray code which is simply 0 and 1. To generate two bit gray code, first reflect the one bit gray code and then prefix upper half with 0 and lower half with 1. To generate 3-bit gray code, again reflect the 2-bit gray codes. So here these green arrows show the meaning of the reflection. And now prefix again the upper half with 0 and lower half with 1. So by repeating this process you can generate n-bit gray code. Notice that there is a cyclic symmetry in these codes. Something like this. So you can start at any code and then traverse clockwise or anti-clockwise. One hot, one cold and gray decoders are used where at a given time only one selection has to be made. For example, selecting modes of the operations or in selecting a tap in a register ladder, for example in programmable voltage generator or in programmable LDO. But now let's consider a different type of application. Let's say we want to generate a linearly increasing current depending on the code. Of course we can design 7 current sources and then use one hot or one cold decoder depending on whether we are using NMOS current mirror or PMOS current mirrors. But actually there is a much more efficient way of doing it using binary codes. We can achieve same functionality by having just 3 current sources of increasing magnitude and then directly feeding code to the switches. Notice that in this scheme we don't need explicit decoders. So when all codes are zero, all switches are off and there is no current. At code 1 only x1 switch is on. In code 2 only x2 switch is on. In code 3 both x1 and x2 switches are on giving us total current of 3 microampere and so on. For PMOS current mirror we just need to invert the codes and then apply it to the switches. As for the incremental value of current sources, if we are starting from some initial current value I0 which is 0 ampere here and some incremental value of delta I which is 1 micro ampere here, then incremental value is doubling in each successive steps. Just a little side note about the placement of the switches. These switches can be placed either at the drain side or at the source side. Placing switches at the source side has little advantage in terms of speed. But at the same time, the switches at source side start to play bigger role in determining the matching properties of the mirror. 
so we need to be more careful in matching the source side switches so unless i am worried about the speed of the switching i'll just put switches on the drain side now this binary coding can be applied at many places for example in voltage trimming so in this scheme i am trimming the voltage around 1 volt in step of 50 millivolts so binary coding is really nice and easy and requires very little digital hardware but as the number of code increase the binary coding runs into a problem where the increment can be non monotonic Notice that in code 3, we are generating 150 millivolt of step using these two register, while in code 4, we are using 200 millivolt of step using this register. As a result, the register units used to generate 150 millivolts of step and the register unit used to generate 200 millivolts of step are completely different. Notice that similar situation also occurs when we go from code 1 to code 2. So we are going from 50 ohm to 100 ohm register which are completely different but the biggest change happens midway the code. Now let's assume that all these registers are made of the series combination of unit registers of 50 ohm which has a plus minus 20 ohm of variation. So the variation in 100 ohm register would be root 2 times as big and in 200 ohm register it will be twice as big. Now it's very much possible that the variation in 100 ohm and 50 ohm register is in positive direction and the variation in 200 ohm register is in negative direction. So now assuming that we are lucky enough to have 850 ohm register at 850 ohm, let's calculate V out again. So here till the code 3, the value still increases but when we move from code 3 to code 4, value actually decreases. Keep in mind that this non-monotonic behavior is a probabilistic event and it will not happen all the time but there is a finite probability that it will go non-monotonic. Now plus minus 20 ohm variation in a 50 ohm unit register is quite unlikely but even if you assume a smaller variation say 1 ohm then this problem will happen at a bigger code. But the point is that binary coding will have to run into this issue if you keep on increasing the number of bits in the code. Now, this non-monotonic behavior can be a very serious issue in many applications. Fortunately, there is another coding scheme which avoids this problem. The so-called thermometer code or simply thermo code will again have 7 or 8 outputs depending on your implementation. So unlike the one hot decoder where at a time only one output is one, here all the preceding outputs are one for a given code. So now we need a proper decoder to generate all these outputs and this decoder will be more complicated than one hot or one cold decoder. So we'll need separate functions to generate all these outputs. For example, to generate this column, we'll need OR of all the inputs and to generate the MSB, we need to AND it. And to generate intermediate outputs, we need more complicated digital logic. Now let's see how thermometer code is implemented. Note that we have considerably more number of switches as compared to binary implementation. Although number of registers are still same if we assume they are implemented using 50 ohm unit registers. Now if we go from code 3 to code 4, we use all the registers used by code 3 and one additional register. And that implies that resistance in code 4 is never going to be smaller than resistance in code 3. And that is why monotonic behavior is guaranteed when using thermometric code. But on the flip side, as number of codes increase, the number of required switches and the digital logic increases exponentially. But fortunately, we can combine thermometer code and binary code to get best of the both worlds. Recall that binary code starts to become non-monotonic when number of bits in the code become large. So we can use binary coding for the LSBs. And MSBs can be implemented using thermocodes. Exact calculation can be done if the uncertainty in the component is known. As an example, let's implement 5-bit programmable current sync using combination of thermo and binary decoders. So here I have used 3 LSBs for binary decoding and 2 MSBs for thermal decoding. And that brings us to the end of the video. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.